When I see dandelions growing, that's when it's time to plant peas. Just put it on like a bread twist tag, right? Just like that. All right, and once you got them in, you just, just do that. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm about to plant some peas. It's, uh, it's going to rain today at some point and then we're going to get more rain and then more rain and then in a couple days we're going to have a really warm sunny day. So this is like a perfect time to plant peas in my opinion this time of year. How do you know when it's time to plant peas? Well, let me show you. So this is where I'm going to plant my peas. The soil's thawed out. It can be worked. Often on the package peas say plant as soon as the soil can be worked. I don't 100% go by that rule of thumb. What I look for is other plants that are basically weeds that are growing, that have a similar, similar sort of activity temperature. Now, these dandelion, they're, kind of, they're a perennial cultivar you grow in a garden. Um, so they haven't germinated because they, I, you know, they're not coming from seed. But I plant, they're a perennial and they're, they're growing, right? Also these, garlic are poking up through, right? These are just early signs of basically the soil is warm enough. All this stuff is telling me the soil is warm enough for the toughest plants to grow, right? These garlic are growing. I take a little stroll across the lawn and the grass seems to be growing. And as you can tell, I don't have a beautiful, well-maintained lawn because I don't care about my lawn. <laughs> it's really not an important thing to me. But if I look carefully, uh, I saw someone I was walking in. Where are they? There, there. Huh. That's the dandelion growing there, right? The dandelion greens are showing. The flowers haven't shot up yet, but the greens are showing. When I see dandelions growing, that's when it's time to plant peas. Now, according to my garden plan, this is where I'm supposed to plant my peas. I think the plan is to plant peas down the middle here, and then on either side I plant potatoes later on, right, when the dandelion is yellow. I find they go together really well. I don't know if it's companion planting, but basically, there's enough light for potatoes to grow and uh, one big trellis of peas um, 10 feet long I find is all the peas we can keep up with in our house <laughs> so that, that's what I plant and I find it makes the most sense to put the trellis down first so this bed's all ready to go uh, early before I turned the camera on I, I came out here I took this had mulch on it all winter long I took the mulch off and I just smoothed the soil out just using the tines of a, of a hay fork um, and I got the, uh, I put all the mulch just on another bed where I'm going to be planting zucchini in about a month, right? It's way too early for anything like that. So I'm going to plant the peas now. And the first thing to do, it makes the most sense, is to set the trellis up right down the center. You're going to have to do it anyway. Um, in uh, a week or two, there's going to be black flies out here like you wouldn't believe. So it makes sense to get as much uh, tedious things where you're tying and stuff and you can't swat, <laughs> right? Get those things done. Also, it gives you a nice straight line to tell you where to plant the peas. Alright, so let's give you a look, see how that went together. I just used these twist tag things. I normally use uh, jute twine, but I didn't have any out here, and I was just using, I had these for tying up tomatoes. <laughs> so anyway, I just, I just using what I had out here. Um, a lot easier anyway, because you don't need any special knots for this. You just, just put it on like a bread twist tag, right? Um, anyway, so you can see it goes up really quick with the cattle point, cattle, uh, you know, these um, wire remesh. Uh, I just, put these posts up straight to eye, which I think I got it pretty close there, right? And then because one won't go at the end, you can see the, the original one stopped here. So I have one of these cattle panels cut in half so I can just, you know, splice it on like that. Looks like I put it sideways instead of up and down. So you can see there's a space here. But I can fix this all with jute tine. Also, so I can get it all relatively level, I just rest it on the top of my, I rest it on the top of my boot and then tie it up, right? And so I got the space at the bottom. 
that's no big deal because I just I just string jute twine along there, right? Uh, the, the, the beans climb really high, and if you tie the jute twine at the top, which I end up doing eventually anyway, um, it's very flimsy um, in the wind and stuff like that. Uh, you can get it, you know, with the structure of this wire remesh up here, you can actually tighten things up really good down here. So it makes more sense. And it only takes some, like a minute to string that along. And I'll do that later. It's starting to rain now, so I better get these peas in right away. Planting peas is dead easy. You just stick them in with your thumb. Uh, I'm using this variety, uh, Super Sugar Snap Peas. I'm using the treated kind. They have a chemical on them that uh, prevents various funguses from getting at them, I think. It's my understanding anyway. Uh, so, what does it say? Seed has been treated with uh, apron and captain. Uh, I can't remember what those do, but when I'm editing the video, I'll put it up on the screen what these things do. The short version is that if you've ever planted peas and they weren't treated and they never grew, <laughs> it's because they rotted in the ground because you had a couple cold nights and that sort of thing. You use these treated ones, and they sometimes I think they cost about the same. Uh, they're more reliable. I'm sure you're putting a couple chemicals in your, your garden, but uh, we're talking, you know, a fraction of a fraction of a teaspoonful in an entire area. It doesn't really, to my, in my opinion, doesn't have any uh, deleterious effect whatsoever. All right, so the exercise now is just, I plant a row right alongside. I, I put them about three inches apart, and I just jam them in with my thumb until they're about the depth of my thumbnail. Right, And I do that on either side of the trellis. So I'm, I'm putting an imaginary line down the center here and I'm planting these two inches to the left of the line. I'm going to plant another row two inches to the right of the line. Right, and I just work my way down the whole garden. Only takes a minute. You know, because it's raining and because all that other stuff's happening, I don't have to water these. I don't have to do anything it's it's like a perfect day and I like to I like to do a lot of my planting when the day is just right um, even if you're feeling tired or worn out okay so I've done it from here to here now so I'm just gonna smooth the soil over where I've planted that's all you got to, all you got to do now let's continue along planting each of these a thumbnail deep this will all be mulched eventually right um, but this time of year, um, you know, there's different ways of doing this, but I find I have better germination results if I leave the mulch off um, for a few weeks to let the sun, you know, the soil's dark, right? So if I leave the mulch off, uh, it helps. Now that, that does mean you get a few weeds, but for me it's relatively, it's not a big deal to come out and uh, pull a few weeds. Uh, and then you put the mulch on, then you don't have to weed again, right? So you do have to weed doing it this way because you will get weeds. There's weeds everywhere, especially when you mulch like I do. I get millions of weed seeds everywhere. Um, but there's so many benefits of having the mulch on. It feeds the soil organisms, maintains the water level, prevents weeds as it blocks the sun, right? Um, it's just there's, there's, more, there's more good than bad, right? <laughs> so uh, uh, I always mulch, but... Uh, yeah, for good germination, I find it's better to leave leave it off at this stage. And, uh, yeah, you have to weed a bit. But uh, that is not the end of the world. And you only really have to do it once. And then when you get a good mulch on there, it's not a big deal. And, I mean, every bed's different. This is early season, right? Early in the season, I take the mulch off to help germination. But in a month or so... It, it's that's not that's not as necessary. I mean, this time of year where I live, it gets below zero or close to zero, right? It gets near freezing every night, or often it gets that that cold every night. So, you know, every morning this nothing's basically every night everything shuts down, and there's a period of time every morning where really nothing's happening in the ground because the soil is just too cold, right? Oh, and just to speak to that, that's why this, this bit of coating on the seeds is so helpful, because it's that cold. You know, certain kinds of seeds, when they're cold, they're just way more susceptible, vulnerable, to being attacked by various um, funguses and, you know, diseases and problems, 
right? And uh, I mean, you can argue that if you're if you have the greatest soil in the world, everything works itself out. Um, but I mean, I I just the soil is no more preferential to the beneficial things as it is to the harmful things. It, everything is there, right? And uh, and everything will still be there. The, 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 if you're worried about, because I know there's some people that are just so much on this scale of the pendulum, if you're worried about the whatever fungicide is on these, uh, killing some fungus uh, that's, that's not you know, that's, that's damaging to peas. It's only killing the fungus that's near these peas, right? And then it breaks down, it dissipates, and it really doesn't do anything. So, you know, if that fungus even exists in this garden, I'm killing like 5% of it. <laughs> and the rest can happily go about attacking seeds for the rest of its little life. Real quick, I just wanted to show how I'm putting these in. Just, I just stick them in like that, right? Tell my thumb is that so my thumbs at soil level right just like that all right just like that all right and then once you got them in you just just do that that's all you got to do <laughs> that's all there is to it yeah, and just if you're curious right that's what the peas look like the treated ones again I, i've done both and i've gotten by just fine with the untreated ones but there are some years sometimes when I have the untreated ones fail on me because I've planted early. I mean, another solution, if, you, if you're going to use the untreated ones, is just wait a few more weeks, right? Wait till the dandelion greens are really big or wait till you see the dandelion flower, right? Then the soil's warmer, then the risk goes down, okay? But when the soil's getting cold at night, you can plant peas, but there's a risk of the seed sort of getting attacked by various things. Um, so if you use the treated ones, you can plant them early. Right? And then later on in the season, when you're busy planting carrots and beets and Swiss chard, you don't have to think about peas. Anyway, so the peas are in. That's done. Didn't take long. It's going to rain today. It's going to rain tomorrow. <laughs> then it's going to be sunny the next day. And uh, everything will just take care of itself. So um, that's how I do it. Hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. Hey folks, guess what? I've started a newsletter at maritimegardening.substack.com. I'll be putting out one article a week, that's 52 articles a year. The articles expand the ideas that I mention on my videos and podcasts. And every article has a read aloud option, so you can just listen to me read it if you're busy doing something else. You can subscribe for $30 a year or try it for 5 bucks a month and see what you think. It's a great way to help support everything I'm doing here. But hey, there's also free content too, so if you just want to read the free stuff, that's fine too. As always, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.